It was back on September 21st when the Jet Regulars walked off the field after beating the Patriots week two of the NFL season. The Regulars' final appearance before the strike. The day before, the Redskins lost to Atlanta their last game before the players' strike, and Washington dropped to a record of one and one. But in this bizarre season, the Redskins' replacement squad won three out of three, capped off by last Monday night's win over Dallas with head coach Joe Gibbs carried off the field, bringing us to today. The Redskins are now four and one. The Jets three up, two down. The regulars are back, and so is the capacity crowd here at RFK Stadium in our nation's capital. 55,000 have turned out for what many feel is the resumption of the real season. Hi, everybody. I'm Marv Albert, along with Joe Namath. Now, Washington comes in a unified team. No one uh, walked past that to pick a line, while 10 Jet veterans did cross the line. Will this have any effect at all on what takes place here today? Well, that won't have any effect on the veterans. I know that. The work is the game at hand, and so the strike feelings will be forgotten. But what it will affect are the rookies. Linebacker Alex Gordon from the Jets. A nose tackle Gerald Nichols and Roger Vick. The learning process has been slowed, so the rookies are going to be more apprehensive today. All right, last week it was veteran backup quarterback Pat Ryan who did cross the picket line, leading the Jets over Miami in an overtime victory. But now it is back to Ken O'Brien's team, and O'Brien has that high-powered offense. What will the Redskins defense uh, have to do against this combination? Well, the Redskins are going to try to contain uh, these three strong receivers, excellent receivers of the Jets, but they're also going to be confronted with possibly a three tight end offense and a two-dimensional running attack because of the addition of Roger Vick. And the Redskins may have benefited more than any other club in the NFL during the strike period. They win three out of three with the replacement players. And they had a host of injuries. Seven key players had the time to heal during the strike, including quarterback Jay Schrader, who had gone down with that shoulder problem opening day against Philadelphia. Schrader made the Pro Bowl last year. He's outstanding. The best thing he does is throw the football deep and reads the blitzes. And Coach Gibbs really likes that. The Jets are going to have to blitz and bring extra people to stop Washington's passing game. And there is head coach Joe Gibbs. He's taken the Redskins to the playoffs four of the last five years, including two Super Bowls. Coach Joe Walton, of course, played here. He has a high-powered offense with this Jet group. It's the defense that's going to be the question mark today. And this kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Jets won the toss. They are receiving. And this is Bobby Humphrey hit down back at the 10-yard line. Good coverage led by Reggie Branch, the three-year man from East Carolina. There's Reggie Branch, Redskins special teams captain. And the Jets will open up in a three tight end alignment. So they go with Rocky Cleaver, Billy Griggs, and Mickey Schuler. The lone running back is Freeman McNeil. Well, this is going to give the uh, Washington defense some problems. They won't know where the strength of the Jet offensive formation lies. So they have a tough time trying to get to that strong part of the offense. And the Jets starting from their 10 as O'Brien goes sideline. And it is completed to Al Toon for a five-yard pickup. And the big guy, Al Toon, at 6'4", 205, working against 5'8", quarterback Daryl Green. As we look at the Redskin front four, they go out of the 4-3. Dexter Manley, one of several injured Redskins, making the return. He suffered a sprained knee in a preseason scrimmage against the Jets. Kaufman, Malott, and Coleman, the linebackers. Green at the left corner coming off an all-pro season. But way back in week two, he was burned pretty good by the Atlanta Falcons. Second down play. And again, it's Toon lunging toward the uh, first down marker. And again, doing it at right at Darrell Green. And appeared to pick up the first down. As a quarterback, I would be throwing at Green quite often today. One thing about this defense that uh, Washington has, and Kenny O'Brien, believe me, is well aware of this. O'Brien will try to go to Green because he plays man-to-man -man coverage all over the field with the Jets' best receiver. So the quarterback, Kenny O'Brien, is assured that he has only single, single coverage on the receiver. And O'Brien now first down from the 22-yard line. Again, the tight end Griggs in motion. This time, McNeil... Raymond McNeil with a three-yard advance. Dave Butts, the left defensive tackle, 
on the stop. Dave Butts, a very large man, Joe. You'd say I think he's a wide detour if a runner <laughs> wants to go around him. Jets got a pretty good surge that time, I thought, from their offensive line, but they do have their hands full. This is one of the largest defensive lines in the league that they're facing in the Washington defense. And it's 6 6, but 6 7. Next to Manley, 6 3, 257. Second and seven at the 25. And McNeil was tripped up. Right at the line of scrimmage, Rich Malott. At a linebacker. On the stop, Dave Butts also involved. There is Butts last season. He was talking retirement, but was talked back into returning. And at a 37, he is the NFL's oldest defensive lineman. Third down and seven. We're just underway at RFK in Washington, D.C. And O'Brien can't find. Monty Coleman, number 51, will get credit for the sack. A good blitzing linebacker, Monty Coleman is one of the best athletes on the team. The reason for this sack, however, is Kenny O'Brien's inability to find an open receiver downfield. Now, O'Brien has been, uh, it's been said that he holds the ball too long, but the Washington defensive uh, secondary did a fine job. There's Monty Coleman. Good play, Monty. And here's Dave Jennings back at his three, and he will punt to the second-year man from Idaho, Eric Yauber. Eric Yauber goes, he says, 5'8", 156 pounds. <laughs> Twelfth-round draft pick last season. And a good punt. Yauber at the 40. And solid coverage by the Jets, led by Bobby Humphrey. So the Washington Redskins to the offense, 47-yard punt, eight-yard return. No score here in Washington. First down at the 41. The quarterback is Jay Schrader. And Joe Gibbs, who will do a lot of shuffling in that backfield, has Keith Griffin opening up at running back. And it's Griffin battling his way to the 44-yard line. Picked up four. It will be a second down and six. Redskins go out of the H-back alignment. H standing for halfback, although you have referred to it as a ace alignment. Well, when there's only one guy in the backfield, it's referred to that. That's when they use the two tight ends. And you see Warren and Didier. And up front, Russ Grimm is at center. Thielman and McKenzie, the guards, Jacoby and May, are at the tackle. Second down, six from the 45. Here's Griffin. Running well for the first down. Keith Griffin, a four-year man from Miami of Florida, the youngest and shortest of the three Griffin brothers, two-time Heisman Trophy winner Archie and Ray, who also played with Cincinnati, picked up 10. Marty Lyons, the rookie Gerald Nichols, and Barry Bennett work out of the 3-4. And there's the other rookie, Alex Gordon, Joe referred to just moments ago. And in the secondary, Rich Miano replacing the injured Lester Lyles at the strong safety position. First down in jet territory at the 45. It's Griffin finding a hole. And advanced at four. A second down six coming up. Marty Lyons making the stop. Seems to me that they're testing Alex Gordon early. They uh, ran the counter play, the last play to get outside of him. There we see Marty Lyons, who's been a... Uh, an excellent defensive end for the Jets over the year. He's the strongest defensive lineman they have at playing the run. But he does have a rookie lined up behind him that's going to be tested today And Alex Gordon. Barry Bennett shaken up, so Don Baldwin, a first-year player from Purdue, has come on for the second out and seven. And once again, Griffin. So he has carried the ball 
all four times for the Redskins. Keith Griffin, a 10th round draft pick last season. Here's Kyle Clifton, number 59 for the Jets, reading the play, spelling it out, and making a good play. He's been around for a number of years with the Jets, and for four years. Here you see number 85, Dawn Warren. Dawn Warren just doesn't get in there to get the block on Kyle. But Clifton and Kyle was able to trip up Griffin. It's a third down and four at the 39. Kelvin Bryant now in the Redskin background. He will be used in long yardage situations. Schrader in trouble. And it is incomplete. Good rush by Scott Mercero, one of the two replacement players who have been added to this uh, Jet roster. And that is an interesting uh, stat regarding the uh, shorter week after Monday night <laughs> games. Redskins have had great success the following Sunday under Joe Gibbs. They're 10-0 uh, following Monday games, dating back to 77, 15-0 after Monday night games. Has nothing to do with this week's game, though, folks, because this team didn't play last Monday night. Neither one of these teams did. And this is Steve Cox. So Townsell let it go, and once again, good coverage by the Redskin uh, special team unit. 34-yard punt, a penalty marker is down. It's called on Washington. The referee is Dick Hantak. Let's say that. Oh. Ineligible, number 56 on the kicking team. Downfield early, 10 yards, repeat the down, fourth down. Let's say this is the first break of the game. The Jets got it because had they not gotten the penalty on Washington, they would have had miserable field position. Number 56, Anthony Co Copeland made the mistake of getting downfield too early. Have to give the edge to the Jets special teams this week. Uh, Larry Pasquale's done a fine job with them, and field position's going to be a major factor in this game. And once again, here is Steve Cox. Townsell. Scott under. The Washington special team unit sky high. 35-yard punt, and they were all over Townsell, led by Dean Hamill. So a timeout has been called. Six minutes gone by. First quarter. Mania still lives here in our nation's capital. As the Jets take over from their 12-yard line. Nine minutes remaining. First quarter with no score. Freeman McNeil try to cut inside and could not. A short pickup, the left defensive end, Charles Mann, on the tackle. Mann in his fifth season out of Novato, Reno. As we check out our first 10-minute ticker of the day, Tampa Bay jumping in front of Chicago, Cincinnati leading Pittsburgh. And Miami in a uh, Jim Kelly, Dan Marino showdown getting out in front. Ken O'Brien again is hauled down. Monty Coleman came with a hard rush from the outside. The Jets simply couldn't get a blocker on him. Number 64, Guy Bingham gets out there and takes him on, but Kenny O'Brien just didn't have anywhere to go because of the pen penetration of Monty Coleman. Looked like a, a mix-up as Monty Coleman was able to take advantage and the Skins with their second sack of the day. It's a third down and 12. Back at the 10. And again, O'Brien under pressure. And the Redskins with their third sack. Charles Mann, who opened the season against the Eagles with two sacks. He had 10 last year. He finished up very strong last season, able to get to quarterback Ken O'Brien, who has had a rough time over the first couple of series. 
But Charles Mann, number 71, beats number 70 on the left side of your screen, Ken Jones, and makes the tackle. Ken Jones, of course, is a replacement player playing right tackle, right offensive tackle for the Jets. And he's going to have his hands full all day long with Charles Mann. And Dave Jennings back as far as he can go in his end zone. That's Eric Yarber at the Jet 45 awaiting this punt. And a good one by Jennings. Here's Yarber. And the Jet special teams with the good coverage. Led by Marion Bobber. So Washington takes over 51 yard punt, six yard return. 55,750 here at RFK Stadium in Washington. 719 left, first quarter. Marv Albert with Joe Namath. Redskins and Jets are scoreless. Schrader able to complete. Alex Gordon on the stop. Ricky Sanders in a second year out of Southwest Texas State making the reception. Number 47, Jerry Holmes. Here we see Ricky Sanders. He's the third receiver they bring in behind Art Monk and Gary Clark. He's a good receiver with good speed. Jerry Holmes uh, just happened to be laying too far off Ricky that last play. Eight yard pickup, a second and two at the 40. Keith Griffin is the lone deep back. And Griffin has the first down, running well in this first quarter. Lions and Gordon on the stop. Kelvin Griffin running behind this big offensive line of the Washington Redskins. There you see Gerald Nichols and, of course, the center that's been all pro for the last uh, four years. Grimm, Russ Grimm, he's doing a job on Nichols. Nichols, the young rookie, has to go against uh, Russ Grimm. And the problem with having a nose tackle that can't beat a center one-on-one -on -one is it frees up your other offensive linemen to block the other defensive player. First down for the Redskins. And Griffin this time is hit for a loss. So Keith Griffin stopped, lost three on the play. Lions combining with the right corner, Russell Carter combining on Griffin. Barry Bennett, incidentally, is uh, back in. He suffered a bruised elbow earlier, so he has replaced Don Baldwin. It'll be a second down and 13. Schrader on the deep drop. Nearly intercepted by Jerry Holmes. And the Redskins hearing it from the crowd. Well, Schrader just missed his receiver, Didier, that time. Didier was coming across the field. You'll see, coming from the right, your screen right to left, there's Didier, open with a step on Kevin MacArthur, but Jerry Holmes, number 47, couldn't quite hold on to the ball. Schrader just missed the pass. Uh, he had Didier open that time. And what with the success of the replacement players over the three games, if the Redskins are struggling here at the start, they will hear it from the crowd, and there may be some sardonic chance along the way. Third down and 13. Schrader can't find anyone. A penalty flag is down. Mark Gastineau in pursuit. And again, the crowd reacts. And we're very early. Five minutes to go in this first quarter. Well, the fans holding offense number 73 penalty decline. The fans expect to see the caliber of football that was being played prior to the strike, and they're just not going to get it today, at least not in the early part of the game. There's Mark May. <laughs> Mark, we have the replacement players sitting over here. You folks at home, you can see that the Washington Redskins gave the replacement players some tickets to the ball game today, so they didn't have to dress out in the uniform. And did not hide them some uh, good seats. A well, little down low, but uh, win three games for your team. You're doing a terrific job. That penalty on the right tackle, Mark May, declined by 
the Jets. So Steve Cox takes the high snap and puts one high in the air. JoJo Townsell calling fair catch at the 18-yard line. Just under five minutes remaining in this first quarter. That will go down as only a 20-yard punt. Mobile One Synthetic Motor The key today could be the play of the special teams for both the Redskins and the Jets, and both have played very well. Both have played well. They've kept the Jets bottled up, the Washington Redskins have. So far, this first quarter has been played in the Jets' backyard. They'd like to get it on the other side of the 50-yard line. Of course, the offense has been a different story, and the Redskins hearing it from the crowd here in the first quarter. Freeman McNeil on the first down play. Raymond McNeil went healthy, one of the most dangerous backs in the NFL. Seven-yard advance. It will be a second down and three. Guy Bingham at center, Ted Banker and Dan Alexander at the guards. Jim Sweeney and Ken Jones at the tackles. Ken Jones, a standout for Buffalo over the years. At left tackle, he's on the right side here on the starting line. Here's Roger Vick with the first down and some more and gang tackle. Vic, the rookie from Texas A&M, reels off eight yards. Monty Coleman able to stack him up. The Jets haven't been able to do this in the past. They didn't have Roger Vic at fullback. Now they do have a two-dimensional running attack. They show pass play, and Vic, with his speed, gets it outside in between the tackles. And look at the strength. He's pulling Monty Coleman and a whole group of Redskins. He still doesn't want to go down. <laughs> and you mentioned before, it's uh, people like Vic, a rookie, and Alex Gordon, the rookie linebacker, who can be most affected by the layoff. Here's Vic again out across the 35-yard uh, line. Picked up three. Darrell Grant on the stop. It will be a second and seven. You feel they could be most affected because they were coming along very well after the first two games, and suddenly their season is uh, put on hold. Sure, they have to recognize, in Vic's case, for example, the blitzes, which meant to block in different situations. And, of course, Alex Gordon, he's got to be able to react to the running game and the passing game in the Washington Redskins. Second and seven, McNeil. Monty Coleman made the stop hitting McNeil for a loss. Loss of one. It was a good play by Monty Coleman, but I'm not too sure that had the pitch been a better pitch out in front of Freeman McNeil that he may have been around that corner a little more quickly. And a flag thrown. Holding offense number 82. Penalty is declined. Third down. Mickey Schuler called on the whole, and as you heard, it was declined last week. The Jet replacement players with a club record 17 penalties. The Jets lead the NFL in that department. They've been called now for 57 penalties. They are actually on a record-setting pace. I'm a little surprised Washington declined this penalty. We talked about the high-powered offense of the Jets with Wesley Walker, Al Two, and Nicky Shuler. Nine yards is not that difficult to the Jets' offense to pick up. They opt for the third and nine, and it paid off because McNeil was stopped. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, that play call certainly fooled me. For those kind of receivers at nine yards to go, a strong defense that Washington has, I'm surprised they chose to keep it on the ground. Number 64, Steve Hamilton made the stop. And the Jets to punt formation. Dave Jennings getting set to punt to Eric Yarber. Jennings, incidentally, switched from number 13 to number four because the Jets retired Don Mater's number 13. Dave said... Uh, one and three equals four. That was the reason. <laughs> Very deep reasoning, yes, Joe. Sir. And he just did get it off. Yauber feels it. Redskins back to the offense with a minute and 52 remaining in this first quarter. 33 yard punt and a five yard return. We'll be right back. 56 pounds of guts and determination. If he doesn't feel that punt on the bounce on this last play, the Washington Redskins would be backed up another 15 yards. A good play by Eric Yarber. Instead, first down from their 32. Redskins and Jets are scoreless. We're late first quarter. And it's Keith Griffin. 
the right linebacker, Bob Crable. On the stop of Griffin, seeing quite a bit of activity here in the first quarter. There's Crable, sixth year out of Notre Dame, and Griffin was carried seven times for 24 yards. Second and six at the 36. Jay Schrader, the quarterback, in his fourth year out of UCLA. He emerged last year. In fact, for the first time, five years, Redskins dominated with the pass rather than the run, and he has Art Monk, one of his favorite receivers, for the first down, a nine-yard advance. Just under a minute left now this first quarter. When Schrader runs the two-minute drill, the last two years, he has produced five touchdowns, eight field goals. He's had remarkable success, particularly when you consider he's had only one full season in the NFL, started only one game at UCLA. He was a professional baseball prospect. Griffin. And Griffin inside the 45-yard line. Finding the hole, picking his way for 12, but a marker is down. His big offensive line of the Washington Redskins. You would expect them to be opening some holes in the middle. And if you watch the left side of the offensive line, they will open a hole here. Illegal formation. Number 73 offense not lining up on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. First down. Repeat the down. Well, that is Mark May who has made it back from a sprained knee suffered in the final preseason game. This is his first game of 87. What a hole. Cal Griffin takes it up the middle. Now, Keith Giff Griffin has been playing in the shadows of Rodgers and uh, Bryant over the last couple of years. And actually, he gets more work than the other two guys have been getting. However, that 12-yard uh, gain brought back. It's a first and 15. Back at the 39. And here's Griffin again finding the hole. Reaching out to the 47. Eight-yard pickup, Rich Beato, the strong safety, making the stop, along with Kyle Clifton, as this first quarter comes to a close. At the end of one here at RFK in Washington, the Jets and the Redskins are scoreless. Placement game. Fans will be saying, these guys are the worst. What's going on well, here? Look, they haven't had contact in five full weeks. The timing is bound to be off. We could say that the defenses are playing good oh. football. But I've seen a sloppy play so far with the holding penalties. Uh, a lineman, an offensive lineman, Mark May, lining up too far off the ball. There's some sloppiness in those areas. But the defenses are playing pretty good. And Joe Gibbs' play calling was a bit more wide open, as it turns out, Monday night against Dallas in the replacement game. So he's playing it very conservatively here as we get underway second quarter second and seven from the 47 and Schrader able to complete to Monk at midfield but short of the first down Art Monk stopped by the right corner Russell Carter it will be a third down and four but as you see a procedure penalty called the Redskins and we hear the boos and this is uh, where these teams are suffering from lack of work their timing formation offense not enough been on the line of scrimmage repeat Whoa. the down second down five yard penalty not enough men on the line of scrimmage that's the second time that's been called today and you know you can line nine men up ten men up on the line of scrimmage and it's legal but you must have at least seven men on the line of scrimmage or it's illegal. And that's twice Washington did not have seven men up on the line of scrimmage. It is a second and 12 back at the Washington 42. That's 81 Monk in motion. And Schrader able to complete for the first down. He has Gary Clark. Harry Hamilton, the free safety. On the stop of Clark, a 21-yard pass play. And that the biggest play of the day. Well, Clark's going to split this uh, zone defense, get in behind, and make the catch in front 
of Harry Hamilton, 39. Now, Harry Hamilton is not used to covering these kind of fast receivers, but he got inside of number 27, Gary Clark did, of Russell Carter and found the open hole. First down at the Jet, 37. Clark to the left, Monk to the right. Griffin found the hole and continues to run well. Jerry Holmes on the tackle, a 10-yard advance. Another Washington first down. Here they're going to the right side with a little counter play, and they just double team. They got Troy Benson out of the play, number 54. And oh my, what a move Keith Griffin put down on Rich Miano. Keith Griffin in his fourth season out of the University of Miami goes 5'8, 185 pounds. And the Redskins looking at a first down at the Jet 27. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Griffin again. Able to break a tackle. This time a short pickup. Gordon and Benson finally got him. So far, the best gainers for Washington have been the counter plays. They'll fake their back one direction and get flowing in the other direction. Griffin has been taking it. Griffin has been taking that little jab step. The Jets' defense—they haven't been working. They're reacting to the first move of the fullback and getting caught out of position just a little bit. From the 26, second down and nine. Redskins coming at four and one, tied with Chicago, San Diego, and San Francisco for the best record in the NFL. The replacement squad beating St. Louis, the Giants, and Dallas. And again, the completion. Ricky Sanders with his second reception. Jerry Holmes on the stop, picked up five. It'll be a third down. About three. That's pretty good defensive play by Holmes. Anytime they throw underneath and they complete the pass and you're able to make the, the, the tackle for only a five-yard gain, you'll see Holmes close quickly right here on Sanders. Make sure he doesn't get outside of make the tackle. It puts Washington in a tough third down and four situation now. And this is the eighth play of the drive. Kelvin Bryant has come on at running back. And 81 Monk in motion. Schrader going up top. Touchdown. Gary Clark with the first score of the day. Put a nice little nod to the inside on Jerry Holmes and simply ran past him. And Schrader put the ball right on the numbers. A perfect throw. A 20-yard touchdown pass. And here is Ali Haji Sheik getting set to attempt the extra point. So with three and a half minutes gone by in the second quarter, it's the Redskins seven. The Jets, nothing. Bobby Humphrey. Eight plays, 68 yards. The Redskins doing it in five and a half minutes, set up by the running of Keith Griffin. And the touchdown pass. Schrader sees number 36 cross the middle. That's the safety, so he knows he has one-on-one -on -one with Gary Clark and Russell Carter. But Jerry Holmes, and he's, boy, he beat Holmes a good five yards that time. That's poor coverage. Oh, Gary Clark, the three-year man from James Madison. By way of the USFL, able to cap off that scoring drive. First down from the 28-yard line, it's Freeman McNeil. Mel Kaufman on the tackle, a pickup of four. Look at Tampa Bay over Chicago. <laughs> so the Chicago Bears, who came in at four and one and back to the regular season, being trounced by the Buccaneers. And Miami moving in front of Buffalo. 14 nothing. How about Green Bay over Detroit? Second and six from the 32. And 
Bryant brought down for the fourth time. The Redskins with their fourth sack of the day. And it is Charles Mann with his second. Well, that's been the inability of Ken Jones to keep Charles Mann out of Ken O'Brien's face. O'Brien wants to find a receiver, doesn't have a chance to look around for a receiver. As the replacement tackle, Ken Jones is beaten once again by man. And it sets it back to a third down 11 at the 27. O'Brien from the shotgun has two. Two short of the first down. He put a move on, but the free safety Todd Bowles did not go for it. Now that's poor offensive philosophy. The Jets were locked into throwing to L2 that time because of the blitz situation. And Toon just had a turn pattern on. He wasn't going to pick up the first down. You need a kind of play that even if it is a blitz, you're going to be able to pick up the first down. That was a poorly designed play. And I'm sure that's what Coach Walton's meeting with his boys over there on the sidelines about. And Dave Jennings will punt from inside his 20. Eric Yauber is back. Yauber averaging just under 10 yards per return. Yauber at the 34. And good coverage by the Jets, led by the backup tight end Billy Griggs. 33-yard punt. Six minutes gone by in the second quarter. The Redskins lead it 7 0. The new Remington Microscreen Ultimate with the exclusive. Oh, it's one of the replacement players to make the uh, Jet lineup. In fact, he's starting at right tackle now over the years at Buffalo. He was a left tackle. He's had all kinds of problems today with uh, Charles Mann, but. He felt he wouldn't have any uh, problems going to the right side because he says he's right-handed. He's felt comfortable with the transition, but he hasn't played against a quality player like Charles Mann. Coach Radakovich, the offensive line coach of the Jets, foreseen their problems on the right side, and that's why he had Jones play the right tackle spot, but so far he's not doing a good job. And Mann has come up with two sacks. Right now, Redskins first down from their 35. Schrader getting the time. Russell Carter on the coverage. Clint Didier, the intended receiver. Right now, we're set for an update. Let's go to NFL Live. All right, Marv, in Miami, Dan Marino picks right up where he left off. Two touchdown passes, one to Mark Duper, this 25-yarder to James Pruitt. 14-0, Dolphins over the Bills, but check this out. Elsewhere in Florida, the Bucks are in front of the Bears 20 to nothing early in the second on two Steve DeBerg touchdown passes. Mike Tomzak at quarterback for the Bears. No Jim McMahon, at least not yet. All right, Bob, Washington, second and 10 from the 35. Back to the ground for Griffin. Broke the tackle. So Keith Griffin able to break the tackle. Got a couple of extra. Barry Bennett on the stop. Picked up only two yards on the play. Mark Gastineau, number 99 in the bottom of your screen, takes on a pretty good block and almost makes the tackle. Tries to make it with his right leg, but couldn't quite get it out there. That's one of the first times we've seen the Jets bring in four defensive linemen. They're concerned with stopping this rushing attack of the Washington Redskins, so they're now using four defensive linemen. Last week, Gastino came up with his first sack in the replacement game, his first sack of 1987. Kelvin Bryant now in the backfield as Schrader throws, and it was deflected by Bob Crabel, the pass intended for Gary Clark. Now, way back in the game against Buffalo on opening day, Bob Crable came up with a deflection that led to an interception of Jim Kelly, and that turned out to be a significant play. Crable, smart football player. It's a six year from Notre Dame. He had a bad knee a few years back, but he's recovered from that 100%. He's one of the true leaders the Jets have out there in the football field. Steve Cox will punt from his 22 yard line, not a stat line that he is uh, proud of. And again, a short punt. Townsell came up and then held back and the Jets will take over around the 35 yard line and Cox hearing it from the crowd six minutes remaining first half and the Redskins lead it seven nothing. 
Gastineau in a discussion with the uh, Jet coaches as the Jets take over following that 28 yard punt by Steve Cox the Jets first down from their 35 they're trailing the Redskins by the score of seven nothing in this first half the Jet offensive line having its difficulties Freeman McNeil tried to accelerate but the outside linebacker Mel Kaufman was right there. The Jets may be trying to give Ken Jones their right tackle number 70 some uh, encouragement by running behind him. Freeman McNeil, a slashing type runner, just needs a little bit of daylight to turn the play into a big gainer. And there is Ken Jones in his 12th year out of Arkansas State, 35 years old, lining up in the right tackle position, second and eight from the 37. Short setup for O'Brien has Toon and has the first down. Al Toon doing it in front of the right corner. Barry Wilburn, 11 yard pass play. Top of your screen, number 71. Charles Mann trying to push Jones out of the way, and he did knock Jones down to the ground. But number 60, Dan Alexander, the Wiley veteran, was waiting on him that time. The Wiley veteran. That's huh? right, old Dan has it all. So I'd never refer to you as a wily veteran. I'm, I'm a young guy. Well, of course. And on the first down play, Roger Vick stopped by Monty Coleman. Roger Vick, first round draft pick out of Texas A&M last year, led the Southwest Conference in rushing, collected five. It's a second and five at the Redskin 47 yard line. McNeil. Only a short pickup. Al Kaufman right there. Mel Kaufman, number 55, flows to the play and makes it. Here you see Van taking an outside rush with open to what looked like a hole for Freeman McNeil to get through. And uh, Mel Kaufman made the play number 55. It will be a third down and four. Freeman McNeil held in check thus far. Can you be young and wily, Joe? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. That's okay. wily. <laughs> Sideline pattern completed to Kurt Sohn. And the Jets have a first down, a 16-yard pass play. <laughs> a clutch catch by Kurt Sohn. Pretty good coverage by the secondary, but Sohn, who's noted for his hands, his moves, and his desire, has made this team out of Fordham. Few people expected him to make it. Here you see the coverage, but Sohn adjusts to the ball nicely on the outside and beats Daryl Green, their best defender. Sohn's second catch of the season. His first one was for minus yardage. Lost the yard on the play. But he's been a dependable receiver over the years. First down at the Redskin 31 as the Jets go out of the slot right. And the completion to Mickey Schuler, Barry Wilburn on the stop. A correction, Al Toon making the catch as Wilburn stacked him up. Those little passes don't look like much. Here's uh, Kenny O'Brien, 7 for 70. Went into the game today completing 70% of his passes already. Think he's not an accurate thrower, huh? Tough to improve, you would think, on 70%, but uh, 7 for 7 certainly does it. Last season, he had the terrific 11-week stretch and then tailed off in the final weeks. Had some injury difficulties. Second and four, down at the 25. And again, it's two doing it in front of Wilburn, right at the uh, first down marker. Not a very sophisticated play, not very difficult. L2 will just run down and stop, turn and look for the football. What makes this play tough for Washington is the importance of making the tackle. Wilburn has to make a short tackle here on a six foot five guy because uh, Al Toon's easy to get away from him. You see Al Toon wearing a, a pair of gloves today. It's not a cold day, but we'll show you these gloves a little later on in the show. Four six games. catches for Toon. First out at the 19, Johnny Hector. 
being tackled. Charles Mann leading the assault. So Hector handling it for the first time. Johnny Hector comes in. Tied for the uh, touchdown lead in the AFC with four touchdowns over the first two weeks of the season. Ken Jones, number 70, doing a pretty good job on Charles Mann this time. Johnny Hector uh, <laughs> just picked the wrong place to run that time. Hector, a solid all-around player. Last season, his best in the NFL. Good receiver also. Does it on the ground. Ninth play of this drive. Second and 10 at the 19. And O'Brien could not find anyone and then throws it away. Mickey Schuler in the area. So that is the first incompletion for Ken O'Brien. And, and it was a throwaway. And it was intentionally incompleted. Good pass protection by the Gen offensive line. If they can continue to give Ken O'Brien that kind of time, he's going to find some receivers. On the other hand, Washington secondary had everyone covered back there. He couldn't find the receiver open. Redskins open the game, doing it without tune against Darrell Green, but that has been held in check. Third down and 10. O'Brien off the roll, throws to the other side. The tight end, Schuler is short of the first down. Monty Coleman, the right outside linebacker, right with him. Only a four-yard pickup. The Jets give the appearance of everything moving out to the right. They want to try and get the defense sucked way over to the right. But Monty Coleman, the veteran that he is, just lays back there. And, of course, Wilbur, number 45, is in good shape. You see Monty Coleman, number 51, making the play. You can fool a rookie with that kind of action, but a veteran's more difficult to fool. And Pat Leahy has come on, attempting a 33-yard field goal. He's three for three for the season over the first two games. And Leahy continues right along. A 33-yard field goal for the 14-year man out of St. Louis University. The Jets' all-time leading scorer, and the Jets are on the board. A reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. As Pat Leahy gets set to uh, kick off. I do want to point out it is now 2 o'clock Eastern time, Joe. That's a time check we're providing as a uh, public service. We hope you set your clock back an hour last night. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I flew back east from the West Coast, and a current athlete who shall remain uh, unnamed was on the plane with a friend. The athlete wanted to reset his watch, so he asked, uh, what's the time difference? His friend said an hour and a half, and he actually adjusted his <laughs> watch for an hour and a half difference. <laughs> no moral to the story. I just want to pass it on. Redskins will start out from their 20-yard line. Wasn't a football player. Good kickoff by Pat Leahy. Getting the ball in the end zone, giving Washington uh, not the best field position to start with. And we get a look now at the Redskins and their two-minute drill. And I mentioned earlier the success that Joe Gibbs has had with it with quarterback Jay Schrader, who has been a master at the hurry-up. Clint Didier in motion. They go to the ground. Griffin following his blockers to the 25. The outside linebacker Alex Gordon making the stop. So it will be a second down and five off the five-yard advance. One thing Coach Gibbs really stresses to this Washington offense in the two-minute period, don't turn the ball over. He feels that the team, with the momentum in the last two minutes, usually comes out and wins the game in the second half. And we'll be back over these final two minutes of the half. Second down and four. From the 26, you see Didier go in motion. And we get a whistle. are pointing at the clock 11 seconds remaining on the play clock Gibbs uh, 
talking with his quarterbacks on the sideline, emphasizes, fellas, look, don't throw the interception here. He's a firm believer that the team that does take the momentum in at halftime comes out and usually does a better job or wins the game in the second half. Now, he doesn't have a lot of plays in this situation. What they do, Coach Gibbs believes in running a limited number of plays a hundred times. He wants everyone to know what their job is exactly, not make the mental error out in the field. I can see right now uh, Washington possibly sticking to the ground a little bit to use up a little more time and then going to the air later. They have reset the 30-second clock. That was the problem. It was down to 11. It should reach 23. So they reset it, and we resume. Second down and four. And Griffin, again, bouncing off attempted tacklers. Alex Gordon made the stop, only a one-yard gain, and the Redskins hear it from the crowd. This well, crowd did. has been tough. They didn't like the call. Uh, they wanted to see a pass play, and again, if they throw a pass play and it's incomplete, it stops the clock, and it gives the Jets more time if they get the ball back in their hands. It was a rather conservative call the last play. Had it worked, though, people would have been cheering. Well, Schrader's coming back from a sprained shoulder, suffered in that opener against the Eagles. Uh, the Redskins being a little bit more on the conservative side, perhaps uh, with Schrader, not uh, looking to unleash pass intended for Gary Clark, covered by Jerry Holmes. And the punting unit will come on. Well, Clark has the lead, and some of the folks here, some of the fans thought there might have been interference, but there's no way Gary Clark could have caught that football. It was 10 yards over his head. Jerry Holmes is getting a lot of work today, number 47 for the Jets. And here is Steve Cox scooping up the uh, snap. Redskins have had difficulties in that department. Jojo Townsell on the return. Again, terrific coverage by the Redskins. A 35-yard punt. And only a four-yard return. A minute six remaining in this first half. And the Jets will take over at their 39-yard line. The Redskins lead it by the score of 7-3 to three off the 20-yard touchdown pass from Schrader to Clark and Pat Leahy connected on a 33-yard field goal, and that has been it following a scoreless and sloppy first quarter. O'Brien for two. Nice catch. And a first down. Barry Wilburn on the tackle. Fine catch by Al Toon. A big target at six foot four. They just run a little turn in. If we get to him, yes, you'll see Toon. He'll run a post pattern on Wilburn, number 45. Use those hands to bring the football in. 24 yard pass play. McNeil has stopped. Kramer McNeil stopped off the draw by Dave Butts. Altoon has caught seven passes for 65 yards. 39 seconds to go in the half, and a timeout has been called. As the catch is made by Townsell, Wilburn on the coverage, and the call against the Jets. Down to 33 seconds remaining in the half. And O'Brien still has the hot hand as the passer. He can get his team into field goal position, possibly even score a six with 33 seconds left, but he needs some Illegal blocking. Illegal use of the hands. Number seven, the offense. Hand to the face mask. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Well, it is the right tackle, Ken Jones. They say he needs some blocking on that right side, and it's a tough job for, Co for Jones over there. Charles Mann is just licking his chops, bending those ears back, and coming on hard. Second and 22 for Ken O'Brien, who is now 10 of 11. Has the time. Threw it over the head of Mickey Schuler. And a third down play coming up. On the right of your screen, screen number 70, Ken Jones. It looks like he has a pretty good lock on Charles Mann that time, but uh, the way Ken O'Brien was hit by both Manley and Jones. Uh, 
looked like he hurt his back or something a little bit. Watch him get hit here. Yeah, yeah. Now you see Kenny kind of uh, hurt in the midsection. Dexter Madley getting to O'Brien, who hangs in for this third and 22. And it is, let's see, did he hold on? He did. Intercepted by Barry Wilburn. Barry Wilburn, in his third year out of Mississippi, comes up with his third interception of the season, the pass intended for Townsell. Well, Townsell turned to the inside, and the pass was a little bit on the outside. I don't know who was at fault here, whether it was Townsell or Ken O'Brien, but Wilburn was in the right spot. And that is the game's first turnover. 21 seconds remaining of the half. Redskins seven, Jets three, and the Redskins have it at their 30. Four-yard line. What do you think? You go deep about three times in a row now? With Schrader, I would think so. Sure, why not? And if he doesn't, uh, you will hear the crowd. Not that that matters, but uh, they have heard it all day. Here's Schrader. Couldn't find anybody, so goes the middle and is able to complete to the tight end, Don Warren, for seven. And now the Redskins call for time. Stop the clock with 13 seconds remaining of the half. There's Doug Williams, the man who took over for the injured Jay Schrader back in week number one when Schrader was hit hard by Reggie White of the Eagles. And Williams came on and led the Redskins to the victory. Then the second week, the Redskins were beaten by the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, but Doug Williams did a good job off the bench. Uh, he had completed 60% of his passes. And there were some folks here in Washington that said, uh, there are some folks that said because of the strike, Doug Williams got the short end of it. He was playing so well that uh, they wouldn't have been able to replace him with Schrader at the time. And as mentioned earlier, Redskins were helped by a large by the strike, perhaps more than any other team. A host of uh, players able to recover from injury. Schrader and George Rogers and Neil Okowicz, Mark May, Dexter Magnin, Clint Didier. Second down three. And Schrader being chased by the rookie Nichols. Able to get it away incomplete. He was out of bounds. Art Monk took a hit from Kerry Glenn. There's Glenn in his second season out of the University of Minnesota. Schrader just unloading the ball now to save time. Glenn helps uh, Monk out of bounds a little bit. But it was an incomplete pass. He had his feet uh, on the line. I guess with five seconds left right now, you've got to throw the bomb. It's a third down play. But they have to throw downtown now. Even if they complete a pass over the middle, they're not going to have time to set up for a field goal. The half's going to end if they uh, run anything in the middle of the field. Well, Steve Cox is their long-range field goal kicker, but not quite this <laughs> long, although uh, the coaches claim that Getting around in practice, he has unleashed from 70 yards plus, and he has uh, hit some from time to time. Looks like they're checking the, the replay on that call concerning Monk being in or out of bounds. The philosophy to reverse any on-field decision only when the replay official, who today is a Cal Lepore, has indisputable right visual evidence that would warrant a change. Yeah, Here's another look. Uh, this play means nothing. What's it going to mean? Uh, an extra down for him. There's only five seconds left on the clock. We're wasting time now looking at a play that uh, is not going to mean a thing to the offense or the defense. And as it turns out, the uh, replay backs up the official call that Monk was out of bounds. So now five seconds left. Again, Schrader chased by Nichols and throws it away as he took a hit. Gastido applying the hit to Schrader. The Redskins are hearing it from the crowd. And it is not friendly. The King of Beers. Redskins will come out to the 20-yard line. Keith Griffin remaining in the end zone. 
So the Redskins will start up from their 20 yard line. A look at what took place in the first first down from the 20. Quarterback Jay Schrader and the running back Keith Griffin. It's Griffin. Try to make the turn but could not. Keith Griffin has gone most of the way. The Redskins with a lot of bumps and bruises at that position. George Rogers bothered by a sore toe and shoulder. Kelvin Bryan has played some but he's hampered by a sore hamstring. I think what we're seeing here is some really wise coaching by Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator of the New York Jets. He just shuffled in four more football players. The Redskins don't know what to expect from the Jets defensively. Redskins have a second and eight. That's Monk in motion. And Monk on the reception. Penalty marker thrown. Art Monk. Picked up nine and the first down. Rich Miano with the stop, but they'll bring it back. The hold against Washington. See that? It doesn't happen to just replacement players. It Offense, happens to the veterans. Number 69. 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Second down. Number 69, R.C. Tillman, all pro guard getting called for holding. That doesn't happen very often. It's Tillman. And McKenzie at the guards. Jacoby and May, the tackles. And Russ Grimm, an original hog, four-time Pro Bowl player, is at the center position. Second down and 19, back at the 11. Only one penalty called on the Jets, most unusual, and that was number four on the Redskins. Kelvin Bryant now in the backfield. Schrader off the screen for Bryant. Beautiful running by Kelvin Bryant. Russell Carter and Kerry Glenn brought him down a 12-yard pickup. That's what it is, this beautiful, beautiful running. You see they're setting up the pass right now with throw the screen over here to the right of your screen. The Jets are in good position right here. Howard just overruns the play. And uh, <laughs> the rest of it is all Kel Kelvin Bryant. Just good running. Kelvin Bryant, a draft pick of the Redskins back in 83, but played three years in the USFL. That's his first catch of the day. Third down seven from the 23. Schrader looking for Ricky Sanders. And overthrows. Sanders covered by Kerry Glenn. And again... Schrader and the Redskins hear it from the crowd. Ricky Sanders had Kerry Glenn beaten by a couple of steps. I can't help but wonder uh, Joe Gibbs thinking that maybe uh, had Schrader practiced a little bit more, he might have hit that receiver. And a flag thrown. Illegal motion. Offense number 83. Penalty declined. And that was Sanders as he was splitting to the right side. Well, maybe that's, how, maybe that's how he got ahead of Kerry Glenn in the first place. He got a quick start on him. Well, not so allowed you, to do that. You do what you can, Joe. <laughs> so, punt formation. Steve Cox back at his nine. And again, a short punt. And Cox has had a very long afternoon. So Cox hearing it from the crowd, that'll go down as either 19 or 20 yards. And the Jets will start out in excellent field position. When he first crossed the picket line, took week as Freeman McNeil, who has been held in check, could not pull away. Alvin Walton, the strong safety on the stop. Uh, that is Steve Cox, seven-year man from Arkansas, walking the sideline. He's had a very rough day. That last punt carrying only 20 yards. McNeil lost the yard, second and 11. Jets with their best field position of the day. Their only score, a 33-yard field goal by Leahy. They trail the Redskins 7-3. O'Brien got the time. 
And it was deflected away from two by the right corner, Wilburn. Well, the Bears are coming back, now trailing 23-14 way Indianapolis at Giants Stadium next Sunday. Third down, 11, sack number five. For the Redskins, Monty Coleman getting credit. The whistle had blown. The play was dead. So five sacks for Washington. And for Coleman, that is his first. Left side of the screen, Monty Coleman comes clean. The Jets did not have a man assigned to block Monty Coleman. See, Monty Coleman comes clean, number 51. They didn't have anyone out there to block, and that was certainly a, a crossed-up assignment by someone. Monty's a happy man. Monty Coleman with his first, first sack of the year. Two for Charles Mann. Dexter Manley has one, as does Darrell Grant. And Dave Jennings back in punt formation at his 27-yard line. No rush. And gets the bounce. Yabber is stopped and a flag thrown. Eric Yabber with a, a short return. It's a 38-yard punt. Yabber for five yards. And the tackle made by the backup uh, safety man, Mike Zordich, first-year player from Penn State. Penalty also against Washington. Four minutes gone by in this third quarter in his 14th year out of St. Lawrence. NFL's all-time leading punter, close to 1,100 punts. Illegal block in the back on return, number 87, 10-yard penalty. Penalty on Terry Orr, a backup tight end. And a timeout has been called. It's the Redskins, 7-3 over the Jones. The uh, right tackle, one of the two replacement players that the uh, Jets added to the uh, roster. Tough to make a, a call on this, but you wonder what kind of treatment that Jones and Gastineau and some of the others who crossed the line will receive from teammates. Jones was by himself, but that could happen, of course, anytime during a game when a guy's just sitting back. Monk not able to hold on. They had had a, Monk couldn't hold on to it, but getting back to Jones, he'd have a lot more friends sitting with him, and so would Mark Gastineau if they were playing better football. Yes. If Gastineau gets a sack or two, he'd have a crowd around him. When Jones starts uh, blocking Charles Mann, he'll make some friends over there. Guys will sit down and talk to him. But uh, when you're doing a poor job, uh, the rest of the guys, the vets, don't want to hear it. We're trying to assess the cold shoulder meter. And it's <laughs> tough to, uh, to get a feel for it. Second out and ten. Back at the nine. Four minutes gone by. In this third quarter, Redskins seven, Jets three. The handoff to Griffin with the hole has the first down. Keith Griffin. Tenth round draft pick out of the University of Miami. Picked up 13 on the play. Miano and Glenn. Number 99. Number 99. Mark Gastineau is in position. He, but he can't play off the block to make the play. Couldn't get around Big Joe Jacoby there. Number 66. You'll see it coming back at you again. 66. Joe Jacoby leads the way. There's a big hole for Griffin. Joe Jacoby going 6'7", 305 pounds. First out at the 22. And Schrader, incomplete. Monk, the intended receiver, covered by Crable. Schrader put the ball just where he needed to put it that time in Art Monk's hand. Monk just didn't hold on to it between Troy Benson and Bob Crable. This pass goes right in between the two of them. Whoa, it's almost intercepted by Benson, but the ball had to be up in a way, otherwise Troy Benson would have intercepted it. Thus far, Art Monk with only one catch. And he's dropped a couple. Second and 10. Back of the 22. Monk in motion. Schrader getting the time, and complete. Again, Monk, the intended receiver. Yeah, but the Jets uh, wouldn't have minded if they had Monk caught that ball because he wasn't going to go anywhere. Carl Howard, number 28 for the Jets. The fans are a little unhappy with the play of the Redskins right now, but uh, 
Had Monk caught the ball, Carl Howard was right there to make the tackle. Art Monk has had three straight 1,000-yard seasons, three straight 70-catch years, and he's made it to the Pro Bowl three straight years in his eighth season out of Syracuse. I'm surprised they haven't been throwing to the tight ends at all. Diddy or Vicky Schuler even. These guys have been quiet all afternoon. Third down and 10. Kelvin Bryant has come on. Big rush. Schrader in trouble, but gets it off. And again, the incompletion through the hands of Bryant. Kerry Glenn on the blitz. And forcing Schrader to release it. So here comes Steve Cox. Schrader is forced out of the pocket by the safety bits. Kerry Glenn comes, comes to the other side, and he's the one that makes this play. When a quarterback leaves that pocket and is running, he's allowed to be tackled, certainly after one step, because it could have been construed as a run pass option rather than drop back pass. And Steve Cox punting to JoJo Townsell. And the special teams continue to excel this time cox with a 45 yard punt he'd been averaging under 30 and town cell right it back for seven bostic on the tackle and a flag was thrown referee they can't eligible downfield on the kick number 78 offense repeat the down fourth down a couple times that's been called. That normally happens when your punter bobbles the snap from center or if it's a bad snap. But the snaps have been good. The punter hasn't been wasting any time getting the ball off. It's just a matter of timing, getting back in the groove for these guys on special teams to, to have to wait, hold, count, one, two, three, four, then go. These guys are a little anxious right now, and they're counting too fast. And the huffing <laughs> and puffing, puffing of Dean Hamill, the man called on that penalty. So here is Cox again, this time from his three. And Townsell comes up for it. 45-yard line. Cox is back and Townsell beats it. And that is the first time that either club been able to take advantage on a return. Vernon Dean makes the tackle, 39-yard punt, but a 44-yard return. Now we mentioned the special teams at the top of the show, and JoJo Townsell is one of the major reasons the Jets have such good special teams. He had good blocking, took it to the outside lane, and I want you to watch the way he holds on to this football once he gets tackled from behind. He's, he's, he doesn't want to fumble it. He gets both hands on that ball. Vernon Dean tried to strip him of the football down there, and uh, JoJo is too smart for it. Most unusual situation when you consider the replacement players by going 3-0 have actually put all kinds of pressure on the regulars. Johnny Hector tripped up by Rich Mallott, the middle linebacker Mallott, making the stop. Johnny Hector has been spotted this afternoon. He did a good job getting back some yardage. The defensive line made good penetration that time. They could have had it for a three, four yard loss, but Hector made a good move to get back to the line of scrimmage. And it's a second and 10, just outside the 11. 88 tune in motion. And O'Brien saw the opening. Gets inside the five. Ballant on the cover up, a seven yard run for Ken O'Brien, so it will be a third down and this three. This is excellent. This is excellent. Kenny O'Brien is one of the quarterbacks that rarely takes the ball upfield, but he knows he can get close to the first down, and he doesn't want to wait all day back there because he knows he doesn't have the time. Uh, this is a, a good decision by Kenny. Joe Walton certainly concerned with getting a touchdown here. Mm. It has been a day for the punters. In terms of activity, not necessarily a good day for Steve Cox. Johnny Hector stopped back behind the line, lost a couple. Monty Coleman getting to Hector. And that turns the crowd around. 
the decibel level here is not quite that of the Metrodome in Minneapolis, but it is among the leaders in that department of the category of the open-air stadiums. They are loud here in Washington. And Pat Leahy will come on now. He hit from 33 yards out earlier. And this will be a 23-yard attempt. Leahy on the season is four out of four. And Leahy connects again. 23-yard field goal. And the Jets now trail the Redskins by one, seven, six. Earlier, the Washington Redskin replacement players were uh, seated. Looks like they have all left. Is that a uh, personal commentary on their part? They've departed. <laughs> Maybe they went into the dressing room to put on their uniforms. You know? Possibility. They had more success than this group of uh, Redskins are having so far today. 7-6 Redskins by one. Over the Jets and the Washington Redskins following that 19-yard return by Keith Griffin. We'll go back to the offense. That is not a, uh, a happy picture from the Washington <laughs> Redskins uh, point of view. <laughs> so the Redskins first down at the 21. Meantime, they're still winning by a point. I don't see why everyone's so upset. If they were behind, uh, oh boy, they would really be upset. Well, not much is happening out there from the offensive uh, point of view. Play action, and Schrader throws the ball for Mark. He's got it. Rich Fiano, step for step, and then Monk beat him in the deep pattern for a 57-yard pass play. Rich Fiano had this half of the field. It was his own coverage, and he didn't get over there quickly enough. You're not going to keep number 81, Art Monk, quiet all day long. This man comes up with the big plays year in and year out. He did again today. Give credit to Jay Schrader for getting the ball out there. And and uh, getting it in position for Monk to make the catch. Miano can't be very happy about that play. First down of the Jet 22 for Monk, only his second catch of the day. Six and a half left, third quarter. Griffin with a flag throw. And a loss of three on the play. Harry Hamilton, the free safety, making the stop on Keith Griffin. And another penalty. It's a procedure against the Redskins. Jets not sure whether they want to take this penalty. They held him to a, a yard gain or less. Formation offense number 73 not lined up on the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Second down. All right. That's the second time that Mark May, the veteran right tackle, has been. Hit with that call, Mark May making it back from a sprained knee, suffered in the final preseason game. So this, in effect, is his opener of the 87 season. Second down and 12. Back at the 24. Griffin is the lone deep back. Monk in motion. Here's Griffin. Stopped by Gerald Nichols, the rookie nose tackle out of Florida State. Jim McMahon has started the third quarter for the Chicago Bears as the Bears try to come back. And Buffalo getting on the board. Marino has thrown three for the Dolphins. Green Bay continues to pile it on against Detroit. And I'm still surprised at that Indianapolis New England score. Third down, 11. Kelvin Bryant now in the backfield for Washington. Pass intended for Bryant thrown behind him as he was covered by Carl Howard. And Ali Haji Sheik will attempt 
a field goal. The first field goal attempt of the day for the Redskins. Ali Haji Sheik replacing the injured Jess Atkinson. The Redskins have had an adventurous time with kickers the last couple of years. And this will be a 40-yard attempt. No good. Now, you wonder why it's a good second guess. Sheik in the past has hit from long range, but field goal kicker, but I have to wonder if because of his difficulty as a putter and that he's heard it from the crowd that Joe Gibbs decided not to put the pressure on him. Yeah, plus uh, Ali Hajashik is a specialist at this. This is uh, his forte kicking field goals. Cox certainly isn't the field goal kicker that uh, Hajashik is, even though he missed this one. Jets take over. First down from the 23. Johnny Hector has come on as Freeman McNeil has been held in check. Only 12 yards on 10 carries. And O'Brien throwing first down looking for Walker. Daryl Green providing the coverage. We're set for an update. Let's go to Bob Costas in our New York studio. This is third quarter action in Pittsburgh. Boomer Esiason under a heavy Steeler rush throws on the run. Keith Gary deflects it. Brian Hinkle intercepts it. He laterals to the rookie from Clemson, Delton Hall, who takes it in for the touchdown. Cincinnati leads Pittsburgh 20 to 10. Thank you, Bob. Second and 10 for the Jets from their 23. Just under five left in the third quarter. Off the draw, Hector. Rich Ballot, the middle linebacker, made the stop. And Jay Schrader walking the sideline. He has had a rough time. He's only 8 for 22, and there is the backup quarterback, Doug Williams. Well, Jay Schrader's been a little bit off target this afternoon, and uh, Doug Williams had a couple of very good games at the beginning of the season, but I don't see... Uh, Coach Gibbs pulling Schrader any time in this game. Third down and five. And O'Brien short of the first down. Charles Mann getting credit for the sack, and that will be the sixth sack of the day for the Redskins and number three for Mann. Joe Walton, of course, talking with Zeke Rakowski, their quarterback coach. He's a little upset with the patterns that were run out there. Obviously, uh, well, not obviously, but somebody zigged when they should have exagged because uh, Kenny couldn't, Kenny O'Brien couldn't find anyone to throw the football to. He had adequate time to release the ball, but uh, couldn't find a receiver. Dave Jennings will punt from his 11. And Eric Yauber, second-year man from Idaho, is back. Again, no rush. And Yarber muffed it, but able to recover. Bobby Humphrey on the coverage. 37-yard punt. And a penalty flag thrown. Players milling around, and the officials try to keep order. And a flag was thrown in the midst of that pack. But I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more points on the board today, folks. You know, with Wesley Walker and Al Toon, Mickey Schuller, Monk, uh, wide receiver, and uh, uh, these great uh, throwers as quarterbacks. Unsportsmanlike action on the white team after the ball was all dead. Number 31, 15-yard penalty. Gary Clark, also an outstanding receiver. There's the, there's the culprit right there that... Uh, Whoa. First of all, Yarber was lucky to get the football back. And then the rest of the pile gets involved. And well, you can see him pulling Barber down, pulling Marion Barber down. You're not allowed to use your hands out there like that, not to grab the jersey and pull the fella down. Come on, Clarence Vaughn. Clarence, uh, let's start playing a little bit cleaner next time. Clarence Vaughn is a rookie out of Northern Illinois. And he was the man called on the penalty. It's a first down back of the Washington 22 as the Redskins go to the offense. Griffin running wide. Three-yard 
gain out of the 25. It'll be a second down and seven. Troy Benson, the inside linebacker, and Kerry Glenn combining on the stop. Redskins led by Keith Griffin have been doing it on the ground. The Jets are getting Zippo, particularly from Freeman McNeil. Normally, early in preseason, the offenses are behind the defenses. I really didn't expect the offense, uh, offense of the Jets in Washington to be this far behind uh, either defense at this stage. Not with the kind of personnel they have. Redskins seven, the Jets six. Griffin. Out across the 30, Bob Crable there. That is close to the first down marker. spotted just shy of the uh, first down. It'll be a third down and one. And George Rogers has come on for the first time. He's bothered by a sore toe, injured shoulder. The word earlier was that he would play in short yarded situation. So here it is, third down and one. And Rogers in the backfield. And has the first down. Picked up five. George Rogers in his seventh season out of South Carolina last year led the NFL in touchdowns with 18. Well, he's had an injured foot, hasn't been able to work much uh, in practice or, of course, during the strike, but he was injured uh, even before the strike. He hasn't seen much playing time because they like him in the short yardage uh, situations. Uh, first down back, they want a quicker, faster back in there. Griffin, that's why he's there. First down at the 36, a minute and 40 left in this third quarter. Redskins seven and the Jets six. Here is Griffin. And a fumble. The Jets indicating that they have recovered. And they have. The fumble by Keith Griffin, who had been running very well. And so the Jets take advantage of the turnover. You know, I've been poor mouth in the offensive play of these two teams, but uh, there are a lot of fans out there that consider good defense sometimes. And because of good defense and good hits, you'll see some fumbles occur. You'll see defensive players forcing fumbles. And there's a defensive man just yanking the ball out and the ball laying on the ground for the Jets to grab. And Harry Hamilton. Able to recover the fumble. So one turnover apiece, and it will be Jets ball at the Washington 41-yard line. Harry Hamilton coming up with the recovery on the hip by Marty Lyons. Don't get that man involved in a uh, racquetball uh, contest, uh, Joe. Joe Gibbs, you're speaking yeah, of, oh, of course. Yeah. Don't play him racquetball. Among his accomplishments, he was the national racquetball champion in the uh, 35 and over group. Back in 1976. But right now, he is involved in a situation that he cannot be pleased about as Ken O'Brien has a first down at the Redskin 41. The Jets trailing by one. And O'Brien goes sideline. And it's a first down out two. <laughs> In front of Darrell Green, a 13-yard pickup as Toon comes up with his eighth reception of the day. Al Toon, six foot five, gets up. Rich Mallott, number 57, trying to spell out the play. He thought it was a run. <laughs> Good pass protection by the Jets this time. Afforded O'Brien the time to get it downfield to Toons, and all six foot four of them. Looked reached like, up there for that pass. Looked like an alley-oop effect. And another first down for the Jets. So Ken O'Brien able to hit the tight end. Mickey Schuler for 12. Al Toon pulling one out of the pages of R.C. Owens. Yes. Doing it in front of the 5'8", Darrell Green. I expected to see Mickey Schuler get more work on the receiving end of the football this afternoon. Uh, there hasn't been a defensive back the last five years that have been able to stop this man. He's been to the Pro Bowl. He's the clutch third down receiver for the Jets. What makes him so good is his ability to come out of cuts and he aggressively goes after the football. Only the second catch for Schuler. 
And O'Brien, as you say, has not been looking that way. First down at the Washington 15. Play action. And O'Brien throws for Schumer. Touchdown. Beautifully executed. First to two, twice to Schuler. A 15-yard pass play, and the Jets have taken the lead by the score of 12 to 7. Not going to keep Mickey Schiller brought it up all day, and Coach Walton certainly happy with that. As we mentioned a while ago, when Art Monk came up with the big catch, Mickey Schuler now with back-to-back -back receptions puts the Jets into the lead. And here is the point after attempt by Leahy. Only six seconds remaining in the third quarter. Leahy continuing his perfect day. The Jets take a 13-7 lead on the Redskins. O'Brien just gets back. The blitz is picked up nicely by Roger Vick that gives Kenny O'Brien enough time to hit Mickey Schuler number 82, crossing the middle. Mickey Schuler number 82 in the middle of your screen. Just simply comes down the middle of the field. Now he's going to cross. Cross in front of you. We don't have a defensive back around him. It had to be a busted assignment by a Washington Redskin. Mickey Schuler, who made it to the Pro Bowl last year with 69 catchers, Combining so well with that man, Ken O'Brien. And O'Brien is now 13 for 18, 129 yards. I don't know how Washington <laughs> could even begin to think of leaving Mickey Schuler alone any time during the game. That's Mickey getting some more instructions from the press box. Sweep around the ticker. Tampa Bay still leading Chicago. Jim McMahon has come on for the Bears. San Francisco on top. Cincinnati Bengals led by Boomer Esiason who now has thrown for two. Dan Marino is connected on three touchdowns for Miami. Indianapolis maintaining that lead on New England. Atlanta and Houston now tied at 28-yard touchdown pass from Warren Moon to Ernest Gibbons. And Griffin hemmed in back at the 10-yard line. Earl Howard able to get downfield in a hurry and to the uh, chorus of boos from this capacity crowd here in Washington the third quarter comes to an end at the end of three it's the Jets 13 in the first scab game the fans walked out to Channing stay on strike Joe will we hear go back on strike if this uh, <laughs> this continues by the Washington fans you will if this continues play action Slater trying to connect with Gary Clark Harry Hamilton on the coverage and the fans were looking for an interference brilliant defensive play by Harry Hamilton had Schrader had the ball a little bit longer a little bit farther it would have been touchdown it's a slight underthrow. Harry Hamilton turns around in the nick of time to play the ball otherwise he would have been called for pass interference but he got around and knocked the pass down nice play for Harry Hamilton Kelvin Bryant who has been utilized in the longer yardage situations back in replacing Keith Griffin. A fumble by Griffin leading to that O'Brien to shooter touchdown a moment ago. Second and ten back at the nine. We're just underway. Fourth quarter. And Schrader going deep sideline through the hands of Bryant. Clifton and Holmes covering, but Bryant should have had it. Oh, the pass couldn't have been thrown any better. It was dropped in between three defenders right off Bryant's hands. Uh, certainly should have come up with the catch. It will be a third down and ten from the nine. Marty Lyons, number 93 on Mark May. It looks like Mark May is doing a pretty good job of keeping Marty Lyons away from the quarterback's face. And this the third down play. It is deflected, broken up by Carl Howard. Pass intended for Gary Clark. Carl Howard breaks this pass up. 
And it's a good thing for the Washington Redskins, I think, because number 27, Russell Carter, has a bead on it. And you'll see him coming right in. Oh, okay. Well, they would have been broken up anyway. They were both in good position. And Jay Schrader is now only 8 for 24. That's 33%. Here's Steve Cox from his end zone, and he has had all kinds of problems. Town sell the deep man. Sewn is up. And here's Town Cell. Breaking tackles, fumbling, and recovering. An adventure for JoJo Town Cell. <laughs> that may be the fastest he's ever scrambled along the ground in his life. 51-yard <laughs> punt, 10-yard return, and the Jets, with the good field position, will take over. The Scabs with their Redskins trailing the Jets, 13-7. Johnny Hector stopped by Monty Coleman, the outside linebacker. Johnny Hector beginning to get some activity with Freeman McNeil struggling. Johnny Hector was forced to turn that run back upfield because of Dexter Manley stringing out the pursuit. Now, uh, Jim Sweeney, the left offensive tackle the Jets, has been doing a good job on Dexter Manley. We heard from Manley early in the game, but not since. He did have a sack, but he has been quiet. Second down and nine. The Jets go to the three tight ends. It's Hector again, putting the speed on. So Johnny Hector getting outside for the first down, bumped out by the free safety, Ted Bowles. 17-yard run by Hector. What's number 70? Ken Jones, the man that's been having a difficult time all afternoon, pulling out the lead to play and kicks the quarterback. You know that has to make Ken Jones feel mighty good. Ken Jones in a struggle throughout the first half. He faced Dexter Manley twice during the course of his career while he was with Buffalo, but he had never gone against Charles Mann, and he will not forget the experience. Mann has come up with three sacks. First down at the 26 in Washington Territory. Here's Vic, and that surprised the Redskins. Another Jet first down. The rookie from Texas A&M, Roger Vick, going for 13. The two-dimensional running attack of the New York Jets. They have Hector and McNeil, but now they have Roger Vick. Vick, the big fullback with speed and strength that can take the ball upfield. Look at the strength of Vick. He just keeps carrying people. In preseason against Tampa Bay, he broke a 53-yard run, and the Jets say you have to go back to the days of John Riggins the last time that a Jet fullback had uh, that kind of distance. Riggins then, of course, went out of play in illustrious fashion for the Redskins. First down at the 12. McNeil can't make the turn, and he lost yardage. Darrell Green coming up to make the stop. A loss of three for Freeman McNeil. Uh, Washington applied good pressure to the outside that time. Didn't give Freeman McNeil any place to go. Freeman made uh, a couple of yards out of it. I actually lost a couple of yards, but uh, <laughs> it's good defensive play by Washington. And on the series, Ken O'Brien, who has been on fire, 13 for 18, has not thrown. So there you see the Freeman McNeil saga, only nine yards, 11 rushers. And he has had himself a very long afternoon, particularly with Hector and Vic running well, second and 13. McNeil picked up seven. Free safety, Todd Bowles on the stop. The Jets well aware with the score situation being 13 to seven, a field goal will force Washington to get two scores on the board. So the Jets right now don't want to take any chances in turning the ball over. Of course, uh, Joe Walton has a lot of confidence in Ken O'Brien not throwing the interception at this point. And Leahy has hit from 33 and from 23. Third down, six. The swing for McNeil. Able to stiff arm his way inside the five, but short of the first down. That's a five-yard pickup. Mel Kaufman, the outside linebacker on the left, making the stop. 
Kaufman made a big stop here. McNeil, uh, had he not lost his footing as he makes his cut here, would have picked up the first down. Just slipped on the turf a bit, otherwise he'd have had the first down. You can see Freeman here when he gets up. He's going to be a little upset with himself, you see, because he really didn't get tackled on the play. He kind of slipped. He lost his footing. <laughs> and now Leahy will attempt a 21-yard field goal. He is two for two. Pat Ryan put it down, and Leahy put it through. So the excellent kicking game of the Jets has been a factor. And the Jets now lead the Redskins by the score of 16-7 with 10 and a half left, fourth quarter. We're not a company. All right, set for the kickoff with the Jets now leading the Redskins by the score of 16 to 7. So the return by Terry Orr, second year man out of Texas. And there's Freeman McNeil, who has carried the ball 12 times for only 16 yards. Yeah, well, Washington's defense is a pretty darn good defense now. Plus, couple that with the fact that Ken Jones may not be the best blocking right tackle for your offensive line. Those things could add up to Freeman McNeil having an off day. Redskins from their 31. Ten and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. That is Monk off the hesitation in motion. A looping pass caught for the first down and more by Clint Dinier. A 25-yard pass play. And that is his first catch of the day. Trader will release this ball about two seconds before Didier is open. He releases it when he has to release it. Here you see Didier coming into the middle, number 86, and making the catch. Bob Crable had applied some pressure on Schrader to make him throw that pass. It worked against the Jets. Didier's first regular season game coming off a hamstring injury. Missed the first two regular games. First down at the 44, and it is incomplete. Schrader going short <laughs> Tampa Bay now leads Chicago 26 14 Jim Kelly with a 14 yard touchdown pass to uh, Chris Burkett and Buffalo closing in Atlanta now by seven over Houston second down and ten at the 44 Schrader able to elude Glenn on the blitz and then threw it away. Kerry Glenn spending a lot of time with that Washington uh, backfield. Mark Gastineau was also on hand. Glenn caught him by surprise that time. Schrader may have read the blitz, but his receiver didn't read the blitz. Schrader being six foot four and 250 just uh, throws Kerry aside and then he gets rid of the football. Schrader now nine for 27. No Redskin has more than two receptions. I'd be wondering if I were Schrader, why didn't my man block that fella? I'd get that straight before this next play. Kelvin Bryant now has come on, third down and 10. Again, the big rush, and it's picked off. Schrader had it deflected. Rich Miano took advantage. The pass intended for Gary Clark. So Rich Miano with his second interception of the season. And give credit where credit is due. It's not Schrader's fault on that last interception. You'll see Clark here. He is going downfield, but the ball will never get to him. He's going to be open, but the football is not going to get there because a the defensive lineman of the Jets hits Schrader's arm. You'll see Schrader's arm get hit just as he releases the ball. Oh, my gosh. I guess he didn't hit his ball. It was a his arm. It was a lousy it like, pass. Yeah, it looked like it was ticked, but uh, apparently just went short oh. on it. Gary Clark is uh, not pleased. Jets take over on the turnover. Second turnover committed by the Redskins. Jets from their 26. And Johnny Hector, the ball carrier. Again, the chant of we want the scabs. Rich Malott, the middle linebacker. On the tackle. 
I can't believe Schrader threw the ball that poorly without having someone hit his arm and have the ball deflected. You know what? I, I never did see it in the replay for sure, but it didn't look like his arm was hit. But it did. appeared to me that the ball uh, took a, a sloppy flight and it might have been deflected. Did he short arm it, perhaps? No, I didn't see any short arm in the motion. Second down at nine. Jets from their 27. And McNeil pivoting, but not able to pick up any ground. Malott, the middle linebacker, was right there. Washington will play the run a little tougher now, knowing that the Jets are trying to keep the ball on the ground for the clock. Schrader's explaining to Clark, of course, of what happened. We'll take another look at the interception. And no one hits his arm, but it could have been deflected. The player that was just in front of Schrader looked like he got a hand on that football. I don't think Schrader threw the ball that poorly. Correction on that last carry was Johnny Hector, not uh, Freeman McNeil. And it's a third and nine from the 27. 8-10 remaining, fourth quarter. Penalty flag throw. O'Brien throwing for Schuler, incomplete. Covered by the linebacker, Monty Coleman. But a marker down. One more look at Schrader's pass. As soon as the ball leaves his hand, there's a defender in front of the man right there. I think he hit the ball. I think the Jet defender got his hand on the ball just as it was leaving Schrader's hand. I'm not making excuses for Jay, I'm telling you, but he throws the ball with such illegal authority. Motion. Offense, penalty is declined, fourth down. So the illegal motion is declined, and it's a punting situation for the Jets. Schrader throws the ball with such authority, that looked like an old wounded duck out there flying through the air, falling to the earth, and uh, that's what they used to call my passes in practice, I wouldn't no. know. Yes, yes, the wounded ducks. Anyway, I, I'm sure someone, I'm sure, Self, not sure. Someone Self-deprecating humor here, Joe. <laughs> And Jennings back at his 13. Eric Yauber in single safety awaiting the punt. The Jets 16, the Redskins 7. And Yauber coughed it up, but the right to his own man, Vernon Dean, fortunately for the Redskins, was able to pick it off. An alert play by Vernon Dean, certainly. Almost looked like a lateral, but it was not. That was a, uh, a muff 37-yard punt, two-yard return by Dean. We'll be right back. Deception, but Redskins get it back. First down from their 39, just under eight minutes to go. Fourth quarter. Redskins trailing the Jets 16-7. Good catch by Bryant. Has the first down. That pass was thrown away and low, but Bryant on the reception for a 15-yard play run out by Crable. Well, the guy we were just giving the credit to, Bob Crable, number 50, bites. He tries to jam Kevin Bryant at the line of scrimmage and can't do it, and so Bryant has plenty of running room going across field for the big gainer. If a linebacker is going to come up there and try to attack that offensive back, he better make darn sure he gets a piece of him. Otherwise, the offensive back will run right by him, as Brian just did. First down at the Jet 46. Schrader getting the protection. And throws it away. Alex Gordon did put some pressure on Gary Clark, the intended receiver you see Schrader going back to pass he can't find the receiver he has plenty of time surprised he can't find the receiver has to be good coverage downfield I don't know if I was six foot four whether I'd be throwing the ball away that early anyway you know I was just, he was in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Alex Gordon but uh, he might have been able to put a move on Gordon. Weren't you six foot four when you first broke in? <laughs> never. No, I'd like to think so, but never. Schrader now 10 out of 30. Second out and 10. And Schrader completes. Kevin Bryant. It is a first and goal for the Redskins. A 40-yard reception. 
And that's what they have Calvin Bryant here for. He's not the first down carrier or the third down rusher. He's a man that can get into the passing game and give you the big gainers. Good pass protection once again. Bryant coming from the right side of your screen to the center. There he is, number 24, and he makes the big gain. That's his specialty. Third down in long situations. They bring Calvin Bryant into the game. Showing some good speed, I might add. His third catch of the day, first and goal from the seven. And Bryant remains the lone deep back. Short setup, Slater throws. Oh, both of them. Didier had a shot at it, not able to hang on as he took the hit from Miano. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him come back with it. Schrader throws the ball with a lot of heat, but there's a mismatch with Didier and Miano of about six or seven inches right there. The ball has so much heat on it, it's going so fast, it just went through Didier's hands. Clint Didier at 6'5", 240 pounds, in his sixth year out of Portland State. And going up against Miano, who goes about six feet, 200. Second half of our doubleheader. You'll see either San Diego at the LA Raiders or Denver at Kansas City. Second and goal from the seven. Jets lead the Redskins 16-7, 6.40 to go in this fourth quarter. Again the bullet. And it is a short pickup. Clifton and Benson all over Art Monk. It will be a third down and goal from the two. Critical play. Third and goal to Jets. Still have, they don't have the goal line defense in there. They're expecting more of a drop back pass or sprint out type pass situation rather than the run up the middle. Again, Bryant, the lone deep back. Straighter looking that way. Touchdown, Bryant. Kelvin Bryant in front of Bob Frable. A classic miss, mismatch. You have a speed back with good moves on a linebacker who's uh, not quite as fast and not quite as agile. So Kelvin Bryant, after having a difficult period earlier, has come back strong. And here is Ali Haji Sheik. The Redskins move within two points with 5.55 left in the fourth quarter. Kelvin Bryant. The left side of the screen, Kelvin Bryant will escape number 50, Bob Crable, by a good two yards. Just simply too fast for Crable to keep up with. You know, they're so close to the goal line in that situation. They had to have Crable in there, it's my thinking. Otherwise, they would have had a, a quicker, a faster defensive back trying to keep up with Bryant. But there was also the possibility of a run play, so they kept Crable in the game. Alvin Bryant, draft pick of the Redskins back in 83, but then played three years in the USFL, winning titles with Philadelphia and Baltimore. With the Redskins, he's been more dangerous as a pass catcher that as a runner, he had three straight thousand-yard seasons in the USFL. This telecast is presented by Authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Washington Redskins and the National Football League is prohibited. Six plays. 61 yards within a minute and 59 and the Redskins down by only two the kickoff by Cox late by Townsell east of the 10 15 and has the opening out of the 45 and a flag down and suddenly the Washington Redskin coverage unit so effective earlier has allowed the Jets two long runs. Hey, we mentioned at the top of the show the special teams would have a major effect on the game and Larry Pasquale. Offside on a kicking team, number 87. Penalty is declined. First down, New York. Larry Pasquale, the coach of the Jets special team, had his boys ready. 
He emphasized the special team's work all week, and there's an unhappy Coach Gibbs. And that's Terry Orr, 87, the man who was uh, hit with the uh, penalty as we watched the return by Townsell. Townsell has a unique knack of being able to pick the holes, and he's got the quick feet to make the sharp cuts. That's why he's so valuable back there. He went 57 yards on the return. First down at the Washington 44. Hector out of the backfield. And Hector running well gets to the 35-yard line just shy of the first down. Mel Kaufman on the uh, tackle. Set for an update. Let's go to Bob Costas and NFL Live. All right, Marv, at Pittsburgh, the Bengals have had leads of 14-3 and 20-10, but the Steelers keep coming back. Here's Mark Malone hitting the veteran John Stallworth, 12-yard touchdown. It ties it up at 20 in the fourth quarter at Three Rivers. Marv? Thank you, Bob. Here at RFK in Washington, the Jets lead the Redskins 16-14. Jets picking up the first down. They're at the Washington 33-89. Cleaver in motion. And O'Brien. His sack, seventh sack of the day for the Redskins. And Guy Bingham was run over. Very unlikely man to be making a sack. Big butts, number 65. You usually see the quicker defensive lineman getting in there to make the sack. But butts made the play, just let ran by Bingham. Kenny O'Brien had nowhere to go. He just, just pushes Bingham aside and gets to him. Of course, Butts is 295 pounds and six foot seven, so I guess he could push a lot of people aside when he wants to. Results in a loss of nine, and now this crowd is into it as they try to get the Redskins going. Seven sacks for Washington, three by the left defensive end, Charles Mann. And the seven sacks leading to a loss of 47 yards by the Jets. And now the Jets have called for time. Second half of our doubleheaders from the Redskin 42. And O'Brien incomplete. Intended for Kurt Sohn. Alvin Walton, the strong safety on the coverage. It sets up a third and 19. But wait, a penalty called. It's a procedure against the Jets. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. That has been a prominent penalty on both clubs today. Yes, it has. An illegal formation is simply not having enough men on the line of scrimmage. You have to have at least seven men on the line of scrimmage. You can have eight, nine, or ten if you like, but you have to have at least seven. And this crowd is rocking. was able to elude the other outside linebacker, Monty Coleman, a loss of one. A very significant play with 4-12 remaining in the fourth quarter. The real significant play to me was the, the tackle by Dave Butts throwing O'Brien for the loss that took them virtually out of field goal range. The Jets would have loved to have been able to stay in field goal range, but because of Butts tackling O'Brien for the loss, it was out of the question by that time. And here's Dave Jennings. Running for the ninth time this afternoon. He's had a good day. He will punt from the Jet 42-yard line, and Eric Yauber back at his 10. Jennings taking his time. The angle punt is down around the 20-yard line. flare-up is handled by the officials. Only a 23-yard punt. Jennings looking to angle it but trying to get it a little bit uh, further downfield. So the Redskins take over at their 20 with three and a half remaining. In those fourth quarters, we sweep around the scoreboard. Well, 
some interesting games. Pittsburgh's come back. Buffalo's come back to tie Miami, too. Look how Detroit is making a charge. And here are the Jets clinging to a 16-14 lead on the Redskins. First down, they mark it at the 21. Monk in motion. Bryant is the running back. And Schrader pops it. It is complete for the first down. Gary Clark on the reception, covered by Jerry Holmes, picked up 11. The key to this play is the pass protection, giving Schrader enough time for Clark to get deep enough downfield to run his out pattern, just stop and swing out a little bit. And the pass is right there, but the key to it was the pass protection. Third catch of the day for Clark. First down from the Redskin 32. 3.25 remaining. Fourth quarter. Through the hands of Bryant. And the Jets had a shot at picking it off. And the Redskins had a shot at another good gainer, too, had uh, Jay Schrader laid the ball into Bryant. Schrader, of course, uh, and there's Bryant, who's had a big day. Schrader's not known for his touch, for putting a, a sensitive touch on the pass. He's more of a strong-arm quarterback. Actually, Bryant should have caught that pass. Now that I look at the replay, it was in his hands. He could have had it. Schrader coming off a Pro Bowl season. Led the NFC in passing yardage in attempts and completions. Second and ten from the Redskin 32. And Bryant could not hold on. That time a tougher catch covered by Bobby Humphrey. Yeah, yeah, good coverage by Bobby Humphrey that time. The ball had to be up in a way, otherwise Bobby Humphrey eats it up. Good coverage that time by number 48, Bobby Humphrey. And it will be a third down and 10 with 3.15 left in this fourth quarter. Washington Redskins at four and one. One and one with the regulars. Then the replacement players went three and all. The Jets at three up and two down coming in. And a big play here for Schrader and the Redskins. Goes for Sanders. He's got it. Thirty-nine yard pass play. Ricky Sanders who appears to have a sense for the, the dramatic with spectacular big catches. Did it last year, and he's come up with a couple here today. You can't do it any better than this. Schrader puts the ball exactly where he needs to, to the outside seam, and Sanders makes the good catch. Harry Hamilton, number 39. Of course, the safety for the Jets couldn't get over there to break up the pass. I don't think any safety could have gotten over to break up that pass. It was in the right place for that type defense. Redskins first down inside the Jet 30. You see the time left fourth quarter. Out of the ground with Bryant. Beautiful move by Kelvin Bryant. And another Washington first down. Harry Hamilton on the stop as Bryant goes for 14. Quick feet, showing his speed, making some fine cuts in here. Maybe they will use him more on first down in the future. Fighting for the extra yardage. Joe Walton trying to inspire his team. And that was the first carry of the afternoon for that man, Kelvin Bryant. The two-minute warning has been signaled. We'll be right back. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1986. Quarterback. Well, the game could come down to this man. Place kicker Ali Haji Sheik. He missed from 40 earlier. Redskins trailing 16-14 with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. National Football League rules require that we present away games starting with the opening kickoff to stations in the team's home area. So viewers in Kansas City and Seattle will be leaving this game in a few minutes for a telecast involving a home team. However, we'll continue to bring you reports on this game to keep you up to date. And the Redskins have a first down at the Jet 15-yard line. 
trying to come from behind. They let early. Monk in motion. And it's Bryant. Picked up a yard. Marty Lyons on the stump. Set for an update. Let's go to Bob Costas and NFL Live. Marv, what an incredible comeback. Jim Kelly has led for the Bills in Miami. They were down 21-0 at one point. Now they lead 31-24 after this 17-yarder from Kelly to Rob Riddick. Great catch by Riddick, who has scored three touchdowns today. Marv? All right, so Jim Kelly, who did it for the University of Miami, doing it against the Miami Dolphins. Second down and nine. Ball of the 14. Schrader stumbled off the bootleg. And a submarine by the outside linebacker, Bob Crable. Time is a major factor now. We have 107 left on the clock. Washington is certainly no hurry whatsoever. They would like to get the touchdown as opposed to the field goal. And the Jets have now called timeout. So the timeout indicated with a minute four left in this fourth quarter. We'll be right back. Today's small cars. This is Ali Haji Sheik, five-year man from Michigan. You may recall those. And they are held short as Barry Bennett got the uh, grips on Kelvin Bryant, and they're short of the first down. And a timeout called by the Jets. That is their final timeout. Redskins have their three remaining. 58 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Of course, the Jets call timeout to conserve some time. Uh, if this field goal is made, they'll have uh, 55 seconds or so to try to get in field goal position for themselves. And Pat Leahy make an attempt at it. Ali Haji Sheik is 0 for 2 on the season. He missed a 33-yard field goal earlier. He had the problems with the uh, with the snapper, and he missed a 40-yard field goal today. And as a result of the uh, problems with the uh, snapper, Jeff Bostic, who was handling the snap, has given way in placement situations to defensive lineman Darrell Grant. Bostic had three bad snaps, in fact, against the Falcons back in uh, week two, although he is still handling the snaps on the punts. Good reason to change for this snap. So the field goal attempt coming up. Schrader will hold. It is a 29-yard attempt. 58 seconds remaining. Fourth quarter. The Skins trailing by two. It is good. Redskins by one, 17-16. Ali Haji Sheik on the club, replacing the injured Jess Atkinson. He had the outstanding rookie season with the Giants, then hit by injuries, had his ups and downs. Last year with the Atlanta Falcons, and now with the Redskins able to connect on his first of the season. Splits the uprights. Fine kick. It's good to have a man around like Hajashik who's been in action before, who's played in the NFL before. You know that he has butterflies in his stomach going into this kind of situation. But because of his background, you figure he's going to be able to regroup, get rid of the nervousness, and make the kick. And he hit that one just right. Although he has had a roller coaster uh, situation the last couple of years because of uh, of injuries and the Redskin kicking game has certainly had its ups and downs. Max Zendejas, the uh, place kicker last year. So 54 seconds remaining. I wonder if they're going to kick the ball away from Jojo Townsell. Remember the last kickoff he took back for. Uh, for about 40 or 50 yards, a good run back. Uh, I would think that they might want to keep the ball away from him. It is Townsell back deep along with Humphrey. Steve Cox will kick it off. The Jets still have time as they will go to the hurry up with the 54 seconds left. And it comes to Humphrey's side. 
He's to the 10. 15. Ran it to his own man. And breaks tackles. Very impressive return by Humphrey out to the 25-yard line. Can't ask for better effort than what Bobby Humphrey just gave us. It's a 19-yard return. Vernon Dean finally got him down. Well, Ken O'Brien with another outstanding day, 15 for 21. As the story of this one also involves the fact that Freeman McNeil was held in check. But Al Toon with eight receptions for 79 yards. And Pat Leahy contributing with the uh, three field goals. The crowd into it, looking to spur the Redskin defense on. O'Brien able to connect to Toon in the open field. The Jets do not have any timeouts left. The clock running. 35 seconds remaining. And the officials will not allow the Redskins to uh, waste the time. They will stop the clock. And O'Brien now officially stops it by throwing it away. With 27 seconds remaining in this fourth quarter, and the Redskins on top by one, 17-16. Not an impressive day for Jay Schrader, who did come on late. The rushing of Keith Griffin, the story earlier, and then he fumbled, and that led to a Jet touchdown. Gary Clark with three receptions, but uh, the man for the Redskins down the stretch was Kelvin Bryant. Several big catchers, and then a, an important run, and he scored the touchdown. Cleaver, the tight end, has the first down, but that is of no significance with the clock running down. 12-yard advance. We're down to 10 seconds. O'Brien just throws it away. Clock stopped with 10 seconds left. Kelvin Bryant. A significant man in the Redskin comeback after a slow start. Not able to hold on to a couple. That's the story also with Art Monk earlier in the day. Kelvin Bryant in his second year in the NFL out of North Carolina. Came to the Redskins by way of the USFL. Ten seconds left. And O'Brien will look to go deep. Fires way downfield. And almost intercepted by the Redskins in the end zone with three seconds remaining, and he will have to do uh, the same. You know, I know Calvin Bryant played an outstanding game, came up with some big plays, too, and he is a valuable player. If not, well, he is the most valuable player. But I'll bet that offensive line of the Washington Redskins are each going to get a game ball after this effort. They gave Jay Schrader plenty of time to throw the football for the most part this afternoon. I'd like to thank our statistician, Joe Costanza, our spotters. Ron Lux, Lynn Outen, also helping in the booth, Wallace Dooley and Karen Fisher. Our producer, Larry Cirillo, our director today, Ted Nathanson. Three seconds remaining, and Pat Leahy will attempt from 62 yards away. Here it is. And way off the mark. A 62-yard attempt. And that is it. So rather than go for the heave from O'Brien, Joe Walton decided to try a 62-yard field goal. And the Redskins come from behind to defeat the Jets by the score of 17-16. And the Redskins, although they were hearing it from the crowd throughout, extend the record to 5-1. and one. Ali Haji Sheik coming through with the game winner. The Jets now drop to three and three. Former teammates with the Giants, Dave Jennings and Ali Hajishi. Washington Redskins over the New York Jets by the count of 17 to 16 before this capacity crowd here at RFK Stadium as real football return to Washington. Although at times they were calling for the replacements during the course.